Hey guys, wanted to give a little update on the Super Turbocharged 6. It has done its job in the heavy truck with a manual transmission to for tuning and learning purposes. Now it's on the shelf, getting ready for its next destination over the winter. And I wanted to show you guys, had a lot of questions on supercharger stuff, how to, how to supercharge and etc. and how I did it. There's several different ways you can do it, of course. But what I used was a Clifford intake manifold. And it is one with water heat, but with the injectors where I have them, didn't really uh, need to use the heat. I've done several carbureted sixes without heat in E85. And uh, with the fuel entering the plenum, that's an issue at idle. But with the injectors close or in the ports, there's enough velocity that uh, the heat was not used, but it was all set up and ready to go in case we needed it. Basically, we have the Clifford without the adapter. Uh, either manifold should be about the same. And in this lower match plate, there is no holes in that plate except for the matched up to the opening in the intake manifold and then so that lower plate gets bolted on with the four bolts and that is not if you guys have been around a Clifford you know that that's not a standard uh, carburetor pattern it's slightly smaller so you can put the adapters on the Clifford intake manifold so that the only hole that's cut into this lower match plate is and that's one inch aluminum is just the square opening there and then in the match plate it's radiused a little bit for airflow and then up on the front intake port of the uh, manifold there's a boss and that was drilled and we ran a stud through there that's plunge cut into that match plate so it's flush and then you can adjust to get your supercharger nose just right so you can square it up with the pulleys and that is adjustable but as you're adjusting that match plate and testing everything out you have to make sure that that plate remains square onto the intake manifold and this one worked out perfect was just a touch proud the nose was just a touch touch high but we used a gasket there for, to give us just a little bit of flex and uh, had no issues with it then for the upper plate on the supercharger, the plate is routered out as big as possible and around all the bolt holes. The, this plate bolts up into the supercharger all the way around the perimeter. And then it's routed out as much as possible for airflow to come out of the front of the supercharger, get squeezed, and go down into the intake. Then the match plate is a little bit bigger, of course, so that you can bolt the plates together. So it's not really that difficult, but a lot of planning has to be done. Because it's so wide, it takes up room for the injectors. And the Clifford intake manifold has the bosses on a 45 that you can drill to put your injectors in. So I had Ron at the machine shop. Ron did all my work. He's a neighbor down the road. Great guy to work with. Great friend. And he machined the top of the intake manifold flat. And then drilled and put the in, and then we put these injector bosses in from eBay. They're pretty cheap. So because we needed the room for the injectors to stand here. Now, if you've ever worked with a Clifford manifold, uh, the spacing is not even from cylinder to cylinder. It's also the ports are raised. That's something I wanted to mention before, too. The ports are raised in a Clifford intake manifold. So, if you are going to be using one of these, port your head to this manifold before you start your porting process. Because the intake manifold, uh, the, the roof of the intake ports are raised. And you'll have some mismatch. Generally, 
that really doesn't matter in real life. Uh, there's lots, of, especially with 460s, some mismatched stuff that runs perfectly fine and makes big power. But everybody wants to do it as good as they can. So remember, get your intake manifold first before you do porting on the head so you can match up the ports. And the ports are off, too. That's always been an issue with core shift with the 300s. The, from port to port, you're going to have alignment. You might have one or two cylinders that are perfect, and then they might stray away from the intake manifold to the intake port on the head. So then after we pressed all our uh, injectors in, we press put a light press on those injector bosses and use some green, uh, I forget what you call it, Loctite, and uh, they're not coming out. They're not coming out. And then from there, bought an injector rail. I believe it was 24 inches, a generic one from eBay. And when he was doing the machining process of putting all these tubes in and drilling, because they're not equally spaced, I had him mark right down the distance between each injector on his CNC machine. So then when he went to do the fuel rail... He had those measurements so he could perfectly drill the fuel rail in the right spot. It was a blank fuel rail. We just had to uh, drill the injector holes into it. So that way, when the injector... And we marked one end because you can't flip-flop it because of the different spacing. So we marked one end of the rail so we knew which way the fuel injector rail would go on. So that's the most difficult stuff, and as you can see, it's pretty tight in there, but it worked out perfect. Then on the match plate, I built little steel brackets that bolt through the rail, one in the front, one in the rear, and that's rock solid. Fuel injector rail isn't going anywhere. Then up top, I'm going to look, and you're going to see that the valve cover, uh, 300 is generally a pretty tall engine to begin with. And you can see that when you put the supercharger and the two turbocharger on there, it gets quite high. The three inch lift kit in the truck helped a lot, or body lift helped a lot back here with the cowl area. Now, some of you guys are carbureted, die hard carbureted guys, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably a topic for a different video. There's more power to be had, especially with E85 with a carburetor, than fuel injected. A lot of guys are going with port fuel injection. Don't think that that is the ultimate, because I can tell you for a fact, for this is my 13th boosted build, that it is not the ultimate setup. Okay, so don't get hung up on any of that stuff. If you know how to tune and you're willing to spend the time, they'll run great on any EFI system any carburetor no problems there but one of the issues was around the back here it was pretty tight um, but back to the carburetor a guy could do this almost the same thing and you could actually put a plenum here with a carburetor on top and then you could blow through the carburetor too so this distance is not a huge deal air travels quite fast and the lag would probably be minimum with a carburetor or almost non-existent things travel much faster than uh, we can react to so that's about it except for setting up the pulleys and such uh, originally this pulley was here and this is going to be hard for you guys this was a power steering pump but we had the uh, belt tensioner here and one of the issues with that, and I knew going into this, was that uh, the crankshaft pulls on the belt. It pulls from the air conditioning, pulls from the power steering pump, then goes around the tensioner and pulls on the supercharger. So there's a lot of strain on this tensioner. And what was happening is the plastic pulley on the tensioner when you'd rev it up you would actually see that pulley bend and then we put a metal one on there from 
a 7.3 turbo diesel that took care of that then when you crack down it really hard like from an idle the tensioner would actually bend a little bit and what I did uh, was wound up filing the back we had some belt problems and filed the back of the tensioner to put a little pitch on it so that when you cracked on it it would pull straight when you were accelerating so that was an issue but on the new setup that I'm doing the belt is going to come off the crankshaft and ride on the water pump pulley which will not flex and then that'll pull directly on the supercharger and it'll come around the supercharger I put that pulley there for good wrap on the supercharger and it also gives good wrap around the alternator and then the tensioner will go here just before the crankshaft and that is the best spot for it since we're here we might as well do a little turbo stuff basically I built a plate that bolts it's hard to see it bolts to the fuel pump so the oil return from the turbo goes where the fuel pump mechanical fuel pump would have been and then that also lines near perfect with the top engine mount so that plate is supported in those two holes and that hole so it keeps the plate nice and rigid to a to remedy that quarter inch thickness on the engine mount I cut that tab out and then put the engine mount on and tack welded it then pulled it off and re-welded it so this tab is actually a quarter inch farther out to accommodate the quarter inch plate that I used then up here it's just some bracketing and bracing to weld on the T4 flange so it's pretty simple and then the, the oil feed for the turbo is just split off of the oil pressure output and I don't believe that I'm running a restrictor I may be I can't remember I do so much of this stuff and it's it's been so long since I uh, did this one but I there may be a little bit of a restrictor in there but that's just three sixteenths nickel copper brake line to feed the turbo and yeah I didn't we couldn't see it before but there was just a slight little bit of oil leak around here so I'll address that before it get, goes into its new home so hopefully all this stuff will shed some light on uh, on turboing or supercharging your 300 it's uh it's a real good motor for it the torque is just insane on these things and you get a little horsepower to boot so happy boosting guys